And we're on. Jamie, hello. Hey, Jordan, how are you doing? I'm good. Having a good day. Having a good day. Yeah. What, what what have you done so far? Nothing. Just <laughs> nice. <laughs> Walked here. Yeah. Nice. Ate, ate a sandwich. Uh, started out a little bit hungover. Uh, What'd you do last night? Uh, did three spots. So I did uh, the clubhouse at eight, and then uh, Atomic Comedy at nine, and then Mint Bar. Got there around nine thirty. Into nice. that show. Uh, and I, I which st- one was your favorite? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what well, uh, the, the clubhouse one? <laughs> well, my, <laughs> well, it was a full full house. Full house. It's it's always great. Um, the night though, I'm in like kind of an internal conflict about my relationship to dark comedy and like because I used to not do it at all, and now I, it's like I can't help myself. So the first show I did some dark stuff, and then the second show half, and then the last show I just fucking all in all dark and uh somebody told the host that i went too far and i <laughs> i don't even know which thing it could have been <laughs> wait how dark were you I, I, I do dark comedy like the last audience was really sensitive so i, I here's a joke that it was they, mint it was what mint, M- was, mint bar. yeah they're yeah. not really like a comedy audience they're like uh we want to go out and laugh there's a lot of french people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh a joke that got ooze that never gets ooze because it's not that big deal. So I'm, I'm face blind and I can't follow movies and TV. Wait, are you face blind? Yeah. Holy shit. Not How'd like, you know it was me? Oh, I like, you're distinctive. And, I, <laughs> and voices and you were walking towards me waving. So <laughs> yeah, like, that probably, yeah, yeah. It's not like, it, it's a spectrum like anything. So I'm, I'm the bottom 1% of recognizing faces. Holy uh, did, shit. Did a study on that, but I can still, I'm not like disabled. You know, <laughs> it's just it's it's difficult for me to anyway. That's that's the the, the premise for the joke that got the ooze and and uh, uh, the setup is that uh, I get confused uh, with movies and TV. I can't follow them the characters. Right. Uh, so I love Squid Game because they're all numbered. <laughs> and they, that got ooh, it's like what are you even ooing at? It might it's vaguely almost like touching racism I yeah don't even, it's like kind yeah. of but the joke yeah. is that like well actually i don't know if the joke you make is that like all like white people think that like that's definitely in there yeah but i'm not even saying that right <laughs> you know so it's <laughs> and i said a lot worse stuff than that uh, i'm sure uh yeah that's funny um wait so i didn't introduce you so we have jordan oh, thomas gray here in the comedy confession booth um visiting from where are you based now? Poland, right? Poland. Yeah. yeah. Warsaw. That is so fucking cool. Is I would it? say. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we get people from Berlin all the time mm-hmm. and like London. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, and like the States. It's like, okay, be boring. Um, yeah. And well, then you're like, yeah, no, I live in Poland. Like, no one lives in Poland. There's a few people there. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> there, yeah. Uh, there's a scene, too. So in Warsaw, we've got like four or five shows a week. Nice. Uh, in English. Um, a lot of great comics, very funny. The audiences, uh, I think, are are. Uh, hello. There's a man there's, staring there's a at visitor. us in the window, like very, very <laughs> aggressively. Yeah. Like it's, his tongue is out. It's pretty weird yeah. for people to do just you, come right up. Do you and, know him? No. Nope. Oh, I don't know okay. this man. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, is weird. I'm gonna take a photo of him. Yeah, just uh, do that, and I'll I'll edit yeah. it and post. I'll throw it in. Here he is. Here's this guy. That's the man. Yeah, yeah. he's looking at the screen. Hello. He thinks he really wants to be yeah. part of something. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he knows that we only get like maybe like 20 listeners per podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like the behavior of either, either someone who's drunk or like a sober person that just has become insane. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, just, yeah. Like like just over life. time. It's just weird because you'd expect that he would be. Oh, he's about to moon us. No, okay. Yeah. Uh, I that think, was weird. Yeah, probably <laughs> post brunch. Post brunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, everyone has off work today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Easter it's just, or Schmingus Dingus in Poland. Schmingus yeah, Dingus. Easter, Schmingus Dingus this is a real holiday. No, Dingus Day. This is real. This is. I'm not making this up. Um, what it is basically, uh, boys chase around girls and then throw water on them, and then in some places they they hit them with pussy <laughs> willow branches. This is this is all on Wikipedia. Schmingus Dingus. Happy Holy Schmingus Dingus. Oh my God. Schmingus yeah. Dingus. Is that because it's April 1st or is it because it's Easter Monday? It's some like pagan tradition. <laughs> that it is dates back fucking centuries. amazing. Uh, small towns, they still actively engage in it. And it's, uh, yeah. I want to engage in that. <laughs> I would love boys to chase me. Uh-huh. 
And the obvious joke, to make and you then, wet. And uh, then make yeah, me wet, yeah, 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 jump on me, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the ones that do chase on me tend to do that anyway, so. Um, <laughs> wow, schmingus dingus, get out of here. Schmingus dingus. So what made you move to Poland? Uh, so my, I lived in New York for a while, uh, mm-hmm. and my girlfriend was Polish. And uh, it's hard to tell this story without just doing Mariah's on a tour, so we're going to wait to Mariah. Wow, well, a lot of, yeah. Oh, I feel all like, her tour people. I feel like I'm on Good Morning America. Yeah, it's it does feel of... kind of special, right? <laughs> We're like, oh my God, everyone thinks we're famous. Uh, this story is like in my show, so now it's only a bit to me. Okay. Like, it's hard even to have a conversation about it without Tell it just... as a bit. I don't okay. care. All right. Well. We'll keep it entertaining. <laughs> uh, so in New York... Uh, my girlfriend was Polish. We both wanted to leave. She wanted to move to Poland to be close to her family, and I've always wanted to live in Europe. So I figured Poland's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's almost there. Nice. Then, then at a show, people w- would laugh. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, that's, it is weird, like saying like jokes in conversation, mm-hmm. and then you're like, wait, this is funny, but in conversation, it's just not. There's a reality TV episode about me moving there. Uh, on really? House Hunters International. Stop. Yeah. And it's, they wanted it to, because we broke up before the move. Okay. Even. I was going to say, so are I, you still I moved, together? I moved alone even because <laughs> <laughs> I'd already found a job uh, and everything. And it was a great life transition. Like, uh, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, New York is fantastic, but it really grinds you down. Yeah. I'm probably going to move back at some point. Just really? Or stand up because it's, it's, it's not the only place to get like really good, but it's like if you really want to suffer <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Im- improve through through that. I've been there a couple times in the past couple years just to do the mics and shows, and you you do improve really quickly. But here you can do multiple spots a day yeah. if you're into that. So I don't know if it's worth the suffering. Yeah, I um, moved here from New York because yeah. I was like. New York is like, yeah, you can do a bunch of spots a day. And I would say of every city I've been to, New York has the most mics where you can just rock up and mm-hmm. be like, I want to try this, yeah. right? Like you could go to three or four mics a night if mm-hmm. you have the ability and time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and $5 per. Yeah. $5 <laughs> per mic to pay for it. Right. Which, you know, you just don't eat. Right. <laughs> yeah. You just don't eat. And then like, uh, when were you there? Uh, I lived there 2016. I really hustled in comedy there mm-hmm. 2016 to 20 like 18. I think that I wasn't doing comedy then. Yeah. Uh, I think COVID wiped things clean. Mm-hmm. And now things are different. I, I don't know what they were like before, but they definitely see, seems like things changed. What in what way uh, do you think they're different? Uh, every, they, they definitely did change. But yeah. I'm curious. Every mic almost yeah. is pay five or six bucks to go mm. up. That's one thing. Uh, and the, I don't know if it was like this before, but it seems like, uh, there's the open mic grind it out scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, you, to claw out of that, basically you start doing free shows and using those actual shows like, uh, not yeah. mics uh, to test material. And then, uh, from there, the top is comedy seller. I'm, I'm talking about my, out of my ass. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it seems like that, uh. It's you can learn a lot doing the mics, but really performing in front of eight comedians who don't want to watch you, and it might be two comedians if you're going yeah. last. Uh, and it's if you do well in that environment, the jokes are solid. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily translate to performing in front of an audience. Exactly, uh, and I and I'll say like you you would often see in New York comedians doing jokes for comedians mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at the mics because it's like, well, you know, whatever. But then it's like, well, you can't use that in front of a regular audience yeah. anyway. Yeah, it's a whole different experience. Yeah. Uh, and But here, you can perform in front of, try stuff out in front of an amazing audience. Yeah, it's like kind of wild. Most nights, it's yeah. great. I'm probably gonna... I'm I'm in a transitional. <laughs> I want to leave I get Poland. It. Yeah, uh, I get, that makes sense to me. <laughs> no, the audience is not that I've ever been to Poland. I love Poland. Polish people are great. Everyone's great. Do you uh, speak Polish? No, less and less every day. Um, <laughs> and if I'm gonna leave, like, there's no point. I'm slowly it, yeah. unlearning Polish. Yeah. The audiences are challenging because the English comprehension is pretty low. It'll be like half expats, half. Uh, Polish people and, and Ukrainians and uh, Belarusians who are technically expats, but whatever. Right. Um, and so if half the audience doesn't understand 
a lot of the words you were saying, there's there's a roof to how well some yeah. things can go, especially if you're doing any kind of heady stuff. If they're spending half their mental energy trying to understand you, they don't have left over the energy to get to, to get your your jokes, and yeah. you have and have to you have to pause for like three to four seconds sometimes just mm-hmm. to to let them catch up. Uh, so it's really nice to be here or, or in New York or anywhere else where I'm. They Barcelona, just get it. the New yeah. York of your <laughs> yeah. I was get comedy wise. There's Berlin. Berlin's probably the. I would say Berlin's like yeah, the New York. The New York, but this is like the the Austin, Texas. Maybe, yeah, we've Europe? been compared yeah. to Chicago. Like, yeah. I think those two, like Austin and Chicago, I find quite similar. Not that I've been for comedy, but as cities in general, like I think if I moved back to the states, I'd move to one of those mm-hmm. cities. Yeah. So there's there's that thing with the audiences being difficult, and like I think it does it does sharpen you, but it can also make your comedy worse if you're having to. To, it's making me sound pretentious, but I don't care. No, that's fine. Uh, if you're having to dumb it down and make it more universal, that's good and bad. Like your yeah. your shows on the road go better because if it works there, it's going to work most places. But like, I'm finding I don't only get to do the stuff that I like to do, and uh, I'll have people complain if I don't make jokes about Poland because <sighs> of my Instagram. I've done a lot of jokes about Poland. Yeah, and uh, that's what people find me. And if they don't get that uh, at the show, some people are like. I get not often but messages like you should do more local stuff we would really appreciate that and it's like I don't I just don't want to yeah it's just (laughs) like not what I want to joke about I've done it to death at this point yeah Um, that's fair that mm -hmm. makes sense Um, so how did you get into comedy Uh, like most comedians I saw an open mic and I was like I could probably do that <laughs> Have you listened to this podcast? Because that's literally everyone yeah. is like, yeah. yeah, I saw some people be shit, and I was like, yeah. I could do yeah. that. Yeah, and then you realize how hard it is. How was your first open mic experience? My first open mic was here in Barcelona, mm-hmm. actually, and I um, in 2015, mm. November 2015, and I had always wanted to try comedy. But I lived in New York before then, and it was way too intimidating. Mm -hmm. So when I moved, yeah. And so when I moved here, I was like, oh, perfect opportunity Mm -hmm. to try comedy. And I went to an improv class, and a bunch of the people there were like, yeah, we do an open mic. Like, there's like two shows a week here, Mm -hmm. maybe. Like, it was really small back then. And um, so I went to see it, and I was like, oh, no one here even speaks English. I'll, I'll be way better than them. Like, I did theater all my life, you know? So I did my first one. I invited, um, the people that I was working with, mm-hmm. like at the school where I was working, and um, a, a few teachers came, a few of my friends came, like a couple random people I met in a club one night came. I think I had like 10 or 11 people come to support. Um, and I, I felt like I did pretty well on my first open mic because mm-hmm. I like rehearsed. You know, I, there's like two types of people when you start. There's the type where you have the jokes in your head for so long that you write it down and you rehearse it like a script and you're like, okay, I've got it. And then there's a type where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna fuck her up. Yeah, vibes. Vibes, yeah. yeah. So that's, I rehearsed and was like, okay, this is solid. And then after that, I was like, I'm hilarious. So my second one was total shit. Exact same experience. Yeah. I went in, my first one I did pretty well, objectively. The, yeah. I, I have that recording of that one on YouTube that I should take. <laughs> Uh, it's I'm all, gonna go find it. It's exclusively stuff that I, I cringe at now, but uh, it of worked. Course. It worked in the room though. So, but now yeah. a lot of it's like stuff about Poland and like uh, you know stuff that many people have thought of. Right, I would say. Sure. Uh, I, I hope. And I was playing guitar during. Yeah, because you're jokes. also musical. I am. I'm and also having internal conflict about that. Really? Uh, Why? Um, I like doing the musical comedy. But I've really trying for the last year been focusing on like just the craft of the doing of it, mm-hmm. and because the songs I haven't written a song, a comedy song in a year. Yeah, and it's uh, so hard to write a comedy song. It like, is, and you feel like you don't have any more ideas. Yeah, after your first five or so ones that so now I have five songs that work. I do them at solo shows because it breaks things up. Yeah, um, but I'm starting to. N- I just need to write more songs. Also, traveling with a guitar and an amplifier fucking sucks, dude. So and hard. It's so expensive as well. It's an extra. Just switch to the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, I've thought about it. Uh, I have a couple of ukuleles. I like yeah. the uke, but I, I guitar is just the instrument that I 
understand the best. I barely understand it, but I understand it better than yeah. The ukulele. And also, like in all fairness, like ukulele has a personality, so mm-hmm. it's like you're doing something specific when you're like I like I'm starting to bring in piano. I'm going to try and start to bring in piano because it's like there's some songs that I'm like with ukulele. It's just like the point is not for it to be like a cutesy song. Like mm-hmm. The point is for it to have some sort of like. You could uh, you could add distortion and just see what that because if you can plug in. Do you, could, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you can plug it, you can add any kind of effects. So That's you, can, true. you could change the sound. You could uh, uh, bring it down an octave even oh. with pedals. So you might want to just try fucking around with, pedal. with the sound of it. You could do like a yeah. metal song on it with pedals, for instance. Uh, yeah, that'd be amazing. Uh, um, do you play with pedals? I just have an amp that has all the effects built in, and at this point, uh, the use of the songs is so business oriented. Of like, okay, it's going to be here. It's going to break up the show. People are going to uh, like it, and it serves a purpose. And I just basically set the amp to a specific setting that sounds good and I don't even fuck with it. Nice. You know, uh, I used to have all these pedals and like uh, a vocal uh, transformer and like do uh, crazy shit. And then I felt like I was just doing that to be like, look at me, look at all the stuff I can do. And uh, it didn't feel like it was helping (laughs) the comedy. Yeah. Yeah, I find that like stuff like that, it's really hard to keep it funny when you're Mm -hmm. like, I'm doing something impressive. People are going to enjoy it and they'll be impressed. Mm-hmm. But like, does it serve the comedy? It's also it's important to stand out because uh, otherwise it's easier to be a comedian who's like pretty good and musical and known for that than it is to be like known for being just extremely funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's part of it. But if you can get to extremely funny and musical, there's almost there's very few comedians like that. There's, yeah, there's yeah, Bo yeah. Burnham, Tim Minchin. Ugh, there's I mean there's fa- they're both my favorite. They're my like, top two. There's a lot, but compared to just comedians, comedians, yeah. uh, it is a way to stand out. Uh, yeah, so I've been thinking about whether to focus more on writing songs or just like give up the guitar for a while and uh, just do the show talky talky wise mm. uh, which is a little scary to me that's scary yeah it's it's you the be- instrument becomes like um oh my god what's the word i'm looking for like a like a safeguard like um a comfort yeah like, it's also it's songs are so repeatable yeah you know you're, you're not gonna fuck it up if the song like it w- works do you ever well. forget the words to your songs no uh, nice. sometimes i'll skip verses <laughs> and then i'll find that it still worked yeah. and then sometimes i'll just remove that verse nice <laughs> it, yeah um, I've only been too drunk on stage once, <laughs> and that was in Bydgoszcz, a city in Poland. Whoa. Bid, there's a lot of S's and C's and Z's. Uh, Bydgoszcz, uh, first half was fine, uh, but I was drinking these like 8% beers, <laughs> no. and then we had the first half, and then we had the break, and then I got up on stage in the second half and like had my guitar because I'm start with a song, and I was uh-huh. like... I don't know if my fingers are going to be able to do <laughs> the things that they're going to need to be able to do to play this. Oh, my God. And it was just like white knuckling <laughs> this song, just like uh, right at the fucking very edge of being able to do it and uh, fucked up a, a few chords, which yeah. I almost never do. Uh, but nobody seemed to notice. I think they just thought I was bad at guitar. Yeah. <laughs> no, one, no one thought I was drunk. I was even like. I did some crowd work and a guy was talking about how he was on a TV show and he was drunk on the TV show. Fun. And I was like, well, we've all been drunk in a performance context, right? <laughs> but nobody laughed because nobody kind of read into... Th- Do they get sarcasm in Poland? Good question. I think so. They get a lot of stuff. Polish people are extremely smart. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and like any country, the country's kind of split. There yeah. are people that get super easily offended. I. It seems like now every time I have a viral joke on Instagram about Poland, mm-hmm. it's a little bit critical of Poland, and it's viral, but I lose followers. <laughs> because, Interesting. Yeah, because it's. I did one about how Polish people are pretty racist, which is true. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think all like European countries are a little bit racist. I was thinking about how it, it a little felt like cheating because I could just go into any country and be like, you guys are racist and, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then leave. And then, yeah, I should yeah. do that in every country. Legit. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you know about Spain's specific racism, but it's like it's like an ignorant racism. It's not like partic- it's not like we hate people of a certain race. It's just that like 
the shops here are called Packies, which in the UK is a bad word. Uh-huh. Um, like that's like the N word in the mm-hmm. UK. And then they have the shops called Chinos, which is also not appropriate. Mm-hmm. And then like, I don't know, a Catalan friend once asked like a black friend if he could touch her hair. He was like, oh, like started to touch her hair. And she was like, uh, no. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but it looks so fun to touch. I'm like, you can't fucking say that to people. Mm-hmm. Like, are you stupid? So that's the type of racism we have. Yeah, I- ignorance. In Poland, there's an energy drink called Black. <laughs> and uh, in case you were confused about what they were going for, the mascot is is Mike Tyson. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so yeah. they they were fully yeah. just going for black, it. Black black energy. Um, <laughs> black energy. Yeah. There's some comedians that have done jokes about that. I'm not stealing that. That's just it's just in it's there. Just, it's just out just there. In the, it's just in the ether. They're just but, done yeah, it. Yeah, black energy. Yeah. It's oh a, my god. Um, Okay, wait. I don't think we finished the story of how you got into stand up. Okay. Because you went to a mic. You did pretty well. Similar experience to you. Yeah. Uh, pretty well with the guitar. I was looping and stuff. Like, oh, cool. Uh, doing music under the jokes, which I don't do anymore because it was. I've it, played with that and I, it's hard. It's hard. It gives it a rhythm naturally. And it, like, it can also, you can use little accents to like almost tell people when to laugh. And, right. Like, uh, it's really interesting, but it was way too constraining after mm. a while. I couldn't adapt. I couldn't like. Uh, I do crowd work, especially with the looping, because it's like, you know, I can stop the loop pedal. But anyway, yeah, went really well and then went into my second mic, totally overconfident. <laughs> I was like, and it's all going to be the same people from last time. They're going to know I did great. So, <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm even going to reference jokes I did last time. And it's going to be like a whole and I'm going to be famous by Mike 10. And, oh <laughs> you, know, my God. you know, just so you go in that. And then I just ate shit. Just <laughs> to- like. And the first time that happens, you don't know what you're like. Why? Why aren't they laughing? And you have zero tools. Yeah. To bring them back. Exactly. So it's like even been. Uh, I think some comedian called it like being punched in the face. <laughs> you're just like <laughs> being punched in the face by yeah. Mike Tyson specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After you drink a, a black energy. <laughs> uh, and then I worked my way back up to being funny from there. <laughs> you yeah. Know, cause, yeah, you you get back to it after your first bomb. It's a real learning experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you know you wanted to do it? Like aside from just going to a mic. Oh, like, just the what's first. What's your background? Um, I never thought I was allowed to do stand up. Mm. Uh, uh, fundamentally, a very insecure person, I think. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's uh, you. Working you have on a it. confident energy to me, right? It's yeah, weird. I don't understand it either. I think it's because you're a white guy. I'm gonna yeah. be honest. Yeah, I'm walking through the world like a reasonably tall, reasonably attractive white guy. Yeah. So I've, I've not had any problems. <laughs> um, so I worked in music for a while. I did classical music, audio engineering. I have a grad degree in philosophy. Oh shit! I worked in documentary film for a while. Oh my god! And I ended okay. up in marketing. Um, Stand up. I was never. I just thought I wouldn't be allowed to do it or something that was for like cool people <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you learn if you're cool and doing stand-up you're in the wrong place <laughs> yeah it's all, we're all dorks yeah <laughs> for the most part uh and uh yes so uh lost my train of thought i'll get back to it what it's okay we? uh you you worked in we'll documentaries it's okay oh. i don't really post at it like time wise <laughs> okay. so if you say anything um controversial it's gonna it's gonna stay stay in hitler's paintings were pretty good I don't know if you've, <laughs> you've seen them they're, they're not bad you know what if his art yeah. teacher said that we would never have had the holocaust yeah so. yeah yeah and i think people imagine like child's drawings no they're like impressive they're <laughs> <laughs> do you have any <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, it's my phone wallpaper um okay uh, I'm a big fan of Hitler, not not the Holocaust, just his paintings. <laughs> so why stand up? I think like like many people, I was just addicted to it from the first mic. Yeah. I had this incredible high from it. I called all my friends. I was like, I think I did too well because now <laughs> I'm going to be insane about this, <laughs> you know, and now I, I, I think I'm God. And <laughs> this is like, like a little moment, which your first bomb just obliterates all that. Yeah, it's great. It's, yeah. Stand up is so builds you up and then humbles you constantly. It's yeah. such a roller coaster. It really like yeah. emotionally. It's like, I don't know. Do you go to therapy? Uh, I, I have graduated therapy twice wow uh, you're twice two, healed yes <laughs> twice healed uh i first went 
I was working a job I hated and was just crying at work every day. And oh, miserable. I've, I've done that. Yeah. And what was she, the job you hated? Uh, I don't know. You don't have <laughs> to say. My coworkers. You don't have to say like gonna, the job yeah. itself, but like what, um, what kind of thing were you doing? It was marketing oh, for yeah, a yeah. data science company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were great. It's just I was going through a thing where I, uh, I got extremely ill mm. and couldn't walk. Oh for God, a while I'm so sorry. A- after COVID, and. Uh, it's called reactive arthritis. Holy shit. Um, and uh, I was like, just not leaving my apartment. I was only working and it was my entire life. And I was just miserable. In New York? Uh, this was in Poland. Oh, somehow. in Poland. Yeah. Holy my shit. job in New York was pretty chill. Nice. <laughs> like, and then I moved to Poland and I have all this new responsibility and I'm like leading a team and, and the company's like growing. And uh, uh, so I went to therapy and she was like, quit your job. And I was like, that is insane. Yeah. <laughs> like no like, one would what? do what? Uh, eventually I did quit. Uh, after my father died, and uh, oh shit, I'm sorry. Why did I? Where, where the fuck am I going with this? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I forgot what question I asked. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, therapy. Therapy. Yes. Yeah. So I just kind of got out of that. I made the job work actually, and my therapist was like, "When you first came to me, you were crying every day, and now you're kind of just chatting about your weekend, and I kind of don't think you need this anymore." Nice. And then my dad died. And then I went back to therapy. Yeah. And then again, uh, the, wait, this happened three times. Uh, <laughs> and then got through it. And then um, she was like, I think, I think, yeah, I think you're good. And then. Uh, what a strange therapist to well, just then, be like, you're good. Well, then my friend died. Oh, God. <laughs> of, uh, I'm so sorry. Fentanyl. It's been a, it's been it's been a pretty fun few years. I yeah. Think. Holy uh, fuck. Ever since I started stand up, people are dropping like flies. But uh, it's, yeah. is that your fault? I'm it kidding. is me. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's they're totally they're not your watching fault. what I'm doing and making uh, life decisions based on that. No. Uh, but uh, the third time, went to therapy after a friend died. A different therapist, and she was oh, like, good. "I think yeah, I think we're. You don't see yeah." I've never had a therapist tell me I'm healed. Huh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe they're just trying to keep that money coming in. Yeah, like, I think that's what it know, is. Yeah, like I think a, that I'm easier to convince. Yeah. Like I, I think they probably are like. He's a white man. He's not going to fall for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But. And I, I do, my last therapist, I think, was pretty good. Um, it could have been just that she was British and I thought her accent made her sound smart. Mm-hmm. And it could have been a lot of it. But, yeah. Uh, but she helped a lot. No, an accent means everything. Mm-hmm. I had a friend who, his therapist was German. And he was like, I love going because it. Fe-, he was like, I love that he's German because I feel like I'm getting therapized like by Freud himself. Mm. <laughs> and, 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 like, like therapy should be in German. Literally, tell me about Tsumasa. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, Freud, daddy. Um, Ger- there were a lot of Germans uh, at one of the shows last night. Oh and, shit! Uh, I think I did. Oh, in um, Atomic. Atomic. Yeah. 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 I went and met up with them after. This is this is what I'm talking about with the the dark stuff. I don't even think this is that good. But like the first thing, Stuart, the host, Mm -hmm. was talking to one of the German guys and that guy was a carpenter. Okay. And he's like, oh, like you're like Jesus. Jesus was a carpenter. Yeah. And I get on stage and I'm like, I'm not like a history guy, but Jesus wasn't German. You know, what would (laughs) Jesus do? Probably not kill six million Jews. And I started with that. I don't know why, why I shoot myself in the fucking foot. No, it's funny. <laughs> like the comedians laugh and, and the room, they're like a little on edge. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, I it's, don't know. I love fucking with Germans. Yeah. Like you kind of have to. Oh, wow. I'm really good at, at telling time. It's We're at 28 minutes. Oh, nice. I have a very good internal clock okay. apparently. Are we going to pause for a second? Um, no, I'm just going to kind of do it like okay. as we talk. It's I'm, fine. I'm trying to quit nicotine. Oh, uh, and okay. I'm failing. I'm not going to vape. Don't you worry. can vape. It's okay. Someone uh, did it in the last one. I'm very against these pouches. What are they? Uh, oh. Let's, <laughs> every, uh, let's every, every every famous every like big podcast is like oh these You're like it's like an advertisement all the time. Yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah. want to. Don't do it, kids. It's very <laughs> bad. But and, I every episode has kind of been like spon- like fake mm-hmm, sponsored. Mm-hmm. Um, Velo. <laughs> <laughs> nicotine pouches for when you want to put your fingers in your mouth <laughs> yeah what if i want to put my fingers in my mouth without nicotine uh you can do that anytime nice. you could dip them in stuff yeah uh, nice uh somebody asked me if i do these pouches socially uh, no it's not like smoking you're not you're not like putting pouches in each other's mouths <laughs> standing outside it's, what does it mean like thing. you can't do a pouch like socially. a pouch socially yeah what is it it's just like a little like it's 
flavoring and pure nicotine. So it's, uh, but they make me feel good and then I feel bad, mm. you know, and it's not worth the washout. Uh, so I've quit a few times uh, and I'm working on quitting again. I have faith in you. Yeah. I think you can do it. I don't have much. How did you take <laughs> up smoking? I never smoked. So I what's started your... with the pouches. No, I know, I know. That's so lame. I know. Just smoke. I'm a fucking dweeb. <laughs> and then I tried to quit. I quit the pouches, and then I started vaping. Yeah. And just more and more, like the older I get, the more I become like a teenage girl. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a vape that's like ice cream flavored in my bag, <laughs> and it tastes like ice cream, but that the sounds experience amazing. is like well. There's a reason you don't literally inhale scoops of ice cream. It like feels weird. Yeah. It, it's also like what flavor is like ice cream? Because ice cream has many different flavors. Like there's no generic ice cream. I mean, do you want to try it? Yeah, I kind of okay. do. Oh. I'm so curious. I don't really vape, but I'll. Uh, I I had a jewel phase, so. It like smells like ice cream too. Isn't it kind of like? It's delicious, but it's too much. Whoa. It's too much of whatever it's trying to be. I think it's kind of like the cone, like the it flavor of the cone. Awesome. It smells amazing. Yeah. Ice cream. Elf, Elf Bar. <laughs> Elf, Elf Bar 2000. 2000 puffs for the Whoa. price of 700 puffs. Nice. Elf How much bar. is that? Put it in your mouth. <laughs> uh, at 15 euros. It's a pretty expensive habit. Yeah, that's not bad. <sighs> it. I'm I'm all or nothing with my addictions, so if mm. I'm really in it, I'll do one every two days, and that really adds up. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's yummy though. Um, and also, I'm drinking like a chai, iced chai tea latte. I feel like the combination is like. Mm. I just feel like the ice cream chemicals are giving. I can feel them giving me lung cancer. Yeah. Like we haven't. We don't have enough data yet, but it cannot be good to be breathing ice cream. I don't know if it's like the chemicals of the ice cream. I think it's the other shit that you're breathing. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's propylene glycol, nicotine, any kind of chemicals, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not smoke, but it's, it's still something. It's, it's not something. Nothing. I know. I started taking a, um, I've been trying to quit drinking, hmm. so I smoke a lot more weed now as a replacement. Cause You're doing California Ramadan? Yeah, baby, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> I've been saying California sober, but I've started reintroducing alcohol in like, um, mm-hmm. not a controlled way, but like. I had a couple glasses of wine on Saturday night mm. while hosting Lolly Amorous. So it's it yeah. was kind of like, I'm trying to just like not drink to get drunk and mm. not do that very often. Maybe get drunk once a month sort of vibes. Yeah. Yeah, I quit for two weeks before coming here. Yeah. I just to, I do it every year, at least a month off. Nice. Usually in August. Just, it really resets your body. It really does. And then you don't, it wipes the slate clean with your habits. So mm. you don't habitually drink as yeah. much anymore and then the habitual drinking can slowly start building up and then you take another break and yeah it's uh probably better to not drink at all but i'll say doing stand-up totally sober for two weeks and then coming here and uh, doing it uh a few beers in yeah. really really fun <laughs> yeah after just being like totally mentally clear and present and and being like at a little tense just being able to just be loose and fuck around yeah it's really nice there's something really nice with like a little bit of chaos uh-huh. and, yeah no that's fun um do you have like what's your relationship with alcohol um well my father was a high functioning alcoholic which is why i'm a high functioning cool. autistic oh uh, that's uh that's not funny that's uh, just a little was, is that little real or is that a joke no i'm not <laughs> autistic uh it's a spectrum my brother's kind of autistic it's I think it's fine, my relationship with alcohol. I think yeah. I drink too often, like most comedians, because if you're performing five nights a week... Uh, and you get free drinks. Free drinks. Uh, everyone else is drinking. Although there's a bit of a sober movement now mm-hmm. in stand-up, especially. And in New York, if you go, like there's whole sober stand-up communities that yeah. don't want to like do the whole, let's hang out and get blitzed after the show. They just yeah. want to not do that. Um, so that's nice. And in Warsaw, I'd say a good chunk of the comedians just, just don't drink and it's not a thing. That's cool. Same um, here, actually. Yeah. A lot of people have quit drinking. I'm not going to name names because that's like their own thing. But mm-hmm. I mean, when I was like, yeah, I'm not really drinking anymore. I mean, we have 
here at the clubhouse, we have zero, zero beers. Mm -hmm. And I would say like John Alice, the owner, and I drink a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I think mostly they're being drunk by comedians as like our free drink. And I was like, yeah, we're probably not making any money on those. And he Mm -hmm. was like, yeah, but it's an investment because it keeps us like level headed and healthy. And obviously like the price of other beers that people are buying makes up for it. But Mm -hmm. And they they taste good. Yeah, I was having them when I was uh, taking my my time off, and I was like, "Damn, this makes me want a real one." Yeah, uh, <laughs> I know, but it does give you a bit of that same feeling of like at the end of a long day when you're like, "Man, I just want a sip mm-hmm. of beer and just want to like, uh, like you still feel that when you have a non-alcoholic one." And just having one on stage just mm-hmm. as something yep. to, to take a drink. I think it's so funny when people take a long drink when people aren't laughing. <laughs> That's I love I love a lot of meta comedy stuff. It's I'm I'm kind of a nuisance at, at some mics in Warsaw because I just this has been said before, but like there's nothing funnier. Stand up is about trying to make people laugh. Yeah, and and comedy is about like subverting expectations. So a person trying to make people laugh and then not laughing is is hilarious. <laughs> so. There, there was a, a period in, when I had less self-control uh, where I feel bad about this, but I could, you know, it was involuntary. A, a new comedian would be like bombing yeah. and then I would start laughing and then they would get encouraged because they heard someone laughing. <laughs> And then I see them going like down the wrong path with like, oh, this is working great. And just like really doubling down on stuff that just they really shouldn't. Be. And I think that's even funnier. And so I'm and then eventually my laughter gets contagious and other people start laughing. And it's just it's really. But if but it it's not good for them because they think that material right, is, is going to work. Uh, but if if there's not a guy in the back who is appreciating it on this perverse <laughs> level uh, who's then. not appreciating that it's not working <laughs> yeah uh, uh I, I that's the most fun i have though that is so it's... fun well shitty mike's gonna be fun tonight okay, then cool yeah um we're also doing an april fool's theme shitty mike nice. so feel free to prank us okay <laughs> i really try to keep it because it it can be considered heckling when and my laugh my cackle is like pretty distinctive and nice. I also snort if I'm really <laughs> into it. So it's in the Warsaw scene an- another comedian was like, if you hear that laugh you're eating shit. <laughs> 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 but, uh, <laughs> I don't feel good about it but it's, uh, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> what are like your favorite uh, what types of jokes are you working on now? Like what are your... I keep going dark. I keep going dark lately. I have some stuff from last night. Uh, I have this joke. Sometimes you write a joke that you really believe in, like mm-hmm. you think it's funny, and, and nothing at all. Mm-hmm. Like it just takes time. Yeah, a thought I had recently is like, so my dad died two years ago. Mm-hmm. So when uh, do you mind if I ask how he died? Uh, COVID. Oh shit. Yeah, and I have a little bit about that because around Christmas he died of COVID. Oh wow. And one of the bits is, uh, and people get weird about that. They start totally. talking about conspiracy theories, and they're like, you know, Santa Claus isn't even real. <laughs> Christmas presents give you autism. <laughs> I did I did do a lot of dead dad stuff uh, last year at my shows. And mm. I did have in Poland people coming up to me after being like, you know, COVID's not real. And I was like, okay, mm, I'll, okay I'll, I'll call my dad and quit hiding. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to uncremate you. The yeah. fuck? That's so <laughs> yeah. like insensitive and rude. But my dad died two years ago. And the thought I had was, uh, so when girls call me daddy, I get really offended. <laughs> Which I think is a funny thought, but it's never worked. I think, I think that's really funny. People, I think I need to mention my dad is dead way earlier so yeah. people get used to the idea. I think also, like, so that to me is like an A to C joke, you know? Like, mm-hmm. sometimes I'll write a joke, especially when I'm writing roast jokes, I'll, I'll skip a connection and... It makes sense to me, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to anyone else. And I think that's an ADHD brain thing where you're like, yeah, duh. And like, to me, that makes a lot of sense. Because it's your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like, I'm connecting the dots Mm -hmm. myself. But I think people with normal brains might not. Mm -hmm. Like they might need an extra little like. Or people who aren't uh, dead inside. Yeah. Through through constantly using language as a a tool to get laughter. (laughs) And, and validation and, and validation and you end up totally divorcing 
the use of language from any kind of morality. Like morality is over here, mm-hmm. language is over here. That's just fun communication tool to have fun. Right. So and you end up start talking about like death and murder and stuff like yes. yeah yeah like yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you got to ease people into it. With this joke, uh, it continues that. Uh, so I'm, I get offended because they call me daddy, right? Uh, which also never happened. No one calls me. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who I, who's calling do, you daddy? I do. Look I would a call bit, you mommy before I call <laughs> yeah, you daddy. Yeah, yeah. I do look a little bit divorced. Yeah, but, uh, uh, like I pay my child support on time. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's a very funny joke. And uh, I'm like, hey, be respectful. Like, okay, and they just think I'm doing a daddy character, like I'm role playing. Right. And I say stuff that my dad would say. I get into it. I'm like, you're not smart enough to be a doctor like me, Jordan. <laughs> it's really sexy. Uh, but it's not been working. <laughs> It'll, you'll, you'll get it there. You will get it there. When you believe in a joke, you will find a way. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I've had this joke for years that I had to put to bed um, that I started working on in New York in, like, 2018 or something that was, like, I just thought the idea of bees, like um, their stingers falling off, like being more like men and penises falling off. Like, mm-hmm. I just like liked that idea, but I didn't really have the joke. And I listened back to the first time I did it, which was at the Creek in the Cave in mm-hmm. New York, which is um, a three minute mic, which Shitty Mike is based off mm-hmm. of. And I heard, do you know Sama Siddiqui? I know Ali Siddiq. Mm, no, different, different Don't Indian guy. Don't you love it when you're like, hey, you know this <laughs> ethnic comedian? And you're like, I know someone with a similar sounding name. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that the is guy? Is that the same guy? <laughs> uh, no, you fucking racist. <laughs> Maybe I'm racist. I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing means anything. I know. The more I do this podcast, the more I'm like, fuck. Like, mm-hmm. what's wrong with me? Yeah. Because there's almost always a racist joke. Well, that's not... Yeah. And if if the if the black people are laughing and usually usually if the black people are laughing and then other people aren't is, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I, I think it's fine yeah that yeah. is fine I have a, a, a the new the most recent song I wrote I make a joke about like when you um, are walking down the street and there's like someone following you or like someone close to you so you're like okay I'm gonna cross the street and then you look back across the street and you see that he's black and you're like fuck I'm racist uh-huh. like yeah. uh, it takes if there's a black person in the audience, they laugh immediately and then everyone else laughs. Mm-hmm. But if there's not, like it takes people a second and they're like, am I allowed to laugh at this? Like, <laughs> I would say if there's not a single black person, I still instinctively just don't, I won't, I won't touch it typically yeah. unless um, I might, but like usually I just don't even think of it because usually yeah. I don't like write the racist stuff. Right. <laughs> and it just comes last night, uh, <clears throat> the, show where I, the show where I went too far. Uh, uh, I started by... <laughs> I went too far. I, I started with this riff about the comedian before me. I forgot yeah. his name. What do you uh, look like? Oh, you don't know. Uh, half, yeah. <laughs> I, ethnic. Uh, very awesome guy. Funny. Does uh, he live he's, here? He's newer. I think he lives here. I think he just started. Um, I'm going to find his name. Uh, he's half, half, half e- Ethiopian, half uh, some other country. Uh, maybe Enoa. Oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he was talking about his background, and he's like half this and half yeah. that. Yeah, he's uh, from Denmark. Yeah, and I, uh, but he doesn't look like that. So it, it, <laughs> <laughs> just say it straight <laughs> up, Jordan. Uh, um, and uh, so I go on stage, uh, and I just start by being like, I feel like I'm the whitest guy on this lineup. The last comedian was like. Uh, my mom's from Tanzania and my dad's from black or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, that's funny. <laughs> it's funny, but I like, and he thought it was, he loved it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but it starting with that tone, yeah. I don't know. There's some compulsion in me. Especially, it, I like that it's a compulsion. It, it really is. I like that you're like, I want to see how far this audience can go. I used to not do any dark stuff. And now I feel like I'm in my like college bisexual phase of mm. like I'm flirting with it. And I'm trying to figure out like, is it just if I just been masking that I don't like it and I actually love it and that's what I want to do. You yeah. know, I'm trying to figure out. It's like figuring out if you're gay. It's like very core to your identity. Like what kind of comedy you yeah. actually want to do. Um, but like, I don't know, people 
could get offended. I'm sorry if anyone is offended that I said the word black, you know. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I think it's, I don't even know what's funny about a uh, mother from black. I think, because it's ironic. Yeah. You know, it's what would a dumb white guy say? Exactly. Like, I think that's like, I think that's something that can go over people's heads. I'd say in any non-English speaking country where English is the second language or the or the, the shared language, right? Which is there's this level of irony beyond what you're saying, mm-hmm. which is... Uh, I try not to be racist, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, but like at the end of the day, like we can't help like it's Avenue Q. Like yeah. everyone's a little bit racist, you I'm, know. I'm face blind, so I only see color. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, so tell me more about being face blind. I'm sorry, I just I I can't not ask. Um, you know, there's a comedian who's face blind. Um, MC Hammersmith. MC Hammersmith. I'm mm-hmm. gonna write that down. He's a uh, he's also musical actually, if, if you couldn't tell by his co- comedy name. But he's a Scottish guy who does like freestyle rap mm-hmm. comedy, and he'll he does this bit where he has everyone in the audience like hold up an item, and he'll go around and like you know it, he's coming up with it on the spot mm-hmm. because he's picky. He's, he's really brilliant. Impressive. He's yeah. super impressive, but he's also face blind. Mm-hmm. And uh, James Regal brought him to Ibiza at one point. And so James like knows him and he was like, hey, man, what's up? And he was like, hey, sorry, I'm face blind. Who are you? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in a lot of ways, stand up is like the worst business to be in if you're face blind (laughs) because you meet so many people and you will have repeat people at shows. Yeah. And like you got to make a real effort. It's a little bit like being. But that's also kind of a blessing because then you can just tell audience members just be like, sorry, I'm face blind. Yeah, I, 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 I refer to people by the countries they're from sometimes. Cool. Uh, it's just as a, as a thing. Someone told me that was offensive. I don't think so. I nah, think nah, nah, nah. Um, but it's a little bit like being autistic or anything else where you develop a skill set to get over it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't affect me much. I, you know, I recognize uh, features, mm-hmm. voices, really good at recognizing. Uh, but if somebody changes their hair or grows a beard, i got to start over. Shit. Yeah. That is wild. What is but like what does a face look like to you? Faces it it's a memory thing. So uh, faces how people memorize faces, they recognize a, a gestalt, like mm-hmm. a whole unit. Mm-hmm. The oh my face. god, the same guy is back. He's back. Hello. Hello, sir. I'm gonna take a selfie with him. Yeah, do it. Uh, <laughs> awesome. I'll try I'll try and get that uh, in post. Uh what was the question? Uh, what do faces look like? They look like faces. It's more just like uh, I tend to notice features a lot more. So yeah. eyes, noses, eyebrows, anything, hair. Uh, so Natalie Portman and V for Vendetta was just mm-hmm. watching that. Just looks like a little boy to me, for instance. There needs to be Whoa. Uh, yeah, hair. Uh, <laughs> I I had a girlfriend who uh, was like, I think I'm going to shave my head. And I was like, it's your body, but please, no. <laughs> you're you're going to look like a little boy to me. Uh, <laughs> How do you, like, do you find, like, the way that you're attracted to people is different? I think so. I, I'm attracted to more unique faces, like mm. standardly very attractive people who just look like stock images to me, mm. basically. there's If there's something distinctive about it it's kind of interchangeable so i tend to not to be attracted to like uh standard standardly hot people there yeah. needs to be something something going on like something cartoony yeah like a big yeah. old juno's like a big old juno's yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah, a, a yeah, yeah. yeah thank yeah. you so much <laughs> <laughs> it's funny people are always like you look like like they whenever people tell me i look like someone they mm-hmm. just come up with a jewish celebrity they're like oh you look like barbara streisand i'm like i don't really but thank <laughs> yeah. you <laughs> I'll take it. Um, do people ever tell you you look like anyone? Uh, ben Shapiro, <laughs> which I take offense to. I would too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would people say that to you? That's uh, so mean. I think because I do, I do this thing where like uh, I can get kind of intense. Oh and I, yeah, I, narrow my I see eyes it and, uh, in the video. I also like to explain stuff, uh, <laughs> and sometimes I'm not right about the things I explain. So there's a lot of commonalities. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Small head, maybe. You do uh, have a small head. Yeah. I was thinking that mm-hmm. actually the other day, but I wasn't going to say it because I feel like that's kind of rude to say. It's not rude. I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're comics. You can say, <laughs> I don't give a shit. I was like, if I were roasting him, I would totally make fun of his tiny head. I used to do bits about um, having a small head. And really? Then, uh, but I found that 
uh, women would become instantly <laughs> not attracted to me anymore. <laughs> that's uh, mean. Some, women. So, well, that's not. It's not their fault. It's just one person after me after the show, and she literally said to me like, uh, "You know, I thought you were really cute until you mentioned uh, you had a small head, and now that's all I can see." Uh, <laughs> Which I is, can't believe she said that. I should start doing it again because it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't need women to be attracted to me. No. I just want. I just want to be funny. So, yeah. Yeah. I I think also like own your features. You know, mm-hmm. like if people are, if someone was like, because I point out my nose on stage, which I don't even think is that big, mm. but if someone was like, oh, I thought you were hot until you talked about your nose. Now I'm like, like oh yeah, it is really big. I'd be like, okay, fuck you. I think if you say it to a woman, it's somehow way worse. I don't know. It feels worse. To yeah, me. yeah, yeah. Um, it is worse. Yeah, maybe because men don't deserve any uh, kind of leeway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, uh, I had one bit about it that doesn't even make sense. That I look, I have like broad shoulders and like, uh, <laughs> like so I'm kind of like a reverse lollipop, <laughs> which doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't, but it does. And I looked better in glasses, I think, because mm. it like it made my head look bigger somehow. Yeah, magnified. Glasses yeah. are magnifiers. Yeah. And someone told me like you looked a lot better with glasses. I got laser eye surgery, oh. so I don't wear them anymore. And she was like, you should just wear fake glasses with fake lenses, and I think you you look better. And my bit about that was that's like if somebody was paralyzed and then they started to be able to walk again. And you're like, you looked really hot in that wheelchair. You shouldn't roll around. <laughs> One of those bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would help your look, the wheelchair. It's a very good comparison. Yeah, I think I think they're the same. Yeah, it's it's definitely the same. <laughs> One to one. You could get blue light. I wear blue light glasses while I work. Mm. Um, I don't like having stuff on my face. That's it's fair. It's like I, I love the freedom of it's. And also you got laser eye surgery. Like don't fucking wear glasses. Do you have? Uh, no, I have perfect, perfect eyesight. vision. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laser eye surgery was the best one I ever spent because it's you're you're disabled. You know, you I wake up, I couldn't see shit. Oh, my God. You already couldn't see faces. Then you couldn't just see anything. You couldn't see anything. Yeah. Just blurs. Uh, And. Oh, my God. It's amazing that we live. This is going to get a little Joe Rogan. uh, (laughs) That that we live in a. That's what we aspire to be. The Joe Rogan (laughs) podcast in Barcelona. Uh, Talking about elk meat. Um. It's amazing we live in a society where I can spend 2,000 euros to completely fix my vision with no side effects. Yeah. Like, that's incredible. And it we, is. We can fly places cheaply. Like, it, we've only been able to fly in the past 100 years. Yeah. And now anyone with 50 bucks can get on Ryanair with Air. It's yeah. pretty great. It is. It's, it we is amazing. Lucky. We are lucky. Yeah. We're very lucky. What's been like, because you tour a lot. Mm-hmm. You've been to Barcelona a few mm-hmm. times. What's like one of your favorite things about um, traveling and and maybe our scene too? Um, different kinds of audiences are great. My favorite audiences are Barcelona. Yes. In the world. I think they're the best really? audiences. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I think the more there's a scene here too, the smarter mm-hmm. they get. Like even mm-hmm. coming here... Uh, last time I was here was a year ago. Yeah. Even in that year, I feel like uh, the comedians have all gotten better and the audiences are like smarter. And uh, I feel like they're getting it and they're not laughing at stuff that uh, shouldn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's super useful. Yeah, yeah. They're quite, they're quite good audiences. And it's true because there have been people who... Uh, audience members who like I recognize right Mm -hmm. I've been seeing them around for a year or two and they come they've been coming back to shows and they know us and they Mm -hmm. know our jokes and they really do like help us level up and Mm -hmm. help us write because you know it's not New York it's not an endless audience and we do get Mm -hmm. tourists that only come once but it really is helpful to have people that see you multiple times and can see you grow with your jokes and Mm -hmm. And then they're like, play the hits. Like, they'll be like, oh, I love that joke you do about mm-hmm. this. Just do it. And it's like, cool. Like, that's fun, too. If a joke is great, it's like a song. Like, yeah. you can hear it multiple times. And totally. it works. Um, but also, there's very few better feelings. Uh, maybe vaping. Uh, <laughs> few better feelings Nicotine. than having a really hot room and just being able to riff and just finding new stuff in the moment. You can't do that with a room that's cold. Yeah. Like, you if you just have to do the stuff that is rock solid, you don't get the play. Yeah. Um, so if you're in a really hot room, uh, that some of those jokes that then work from the riff might not work in a regular room, but right. like you wouldn't find them if you didn't have that energy in the space to be able to, to play around. Uh, I saw Michelle Wolf 
on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like working out her new hour mm-hmm. and like so great to see her just, you know, using the energy to find like what's working and like, okay, I'm going to go further with this. I'm going to do this. And, yeah. like, and if something's not working, she's like, okay, I'll register that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really fun to see Michelle work because she's true. Like she's a pro. Mm-hmm. And it's fun because I think the last special she put out was after she lived here. Mm-hmm. And so some of the jokes in her special, I'm like, I remember when she first wrote that joke and it totally bombed. Like mm-hmm. even I've seen even Michelle Wolf not bomb. She doesn't totally bomb. But I've seen her not get the response that she gets mm-hmm. in a taped special because mm-hmm. she's working through the jokes and she's like, OK, that didn't work. And then she yeah. just it's a process. You yeah. Have, you have to bomb. If you're not bombing, you're not trying stuff. Yeah. There's there's no comedian that maybe John Mulaney I don't know. <laughs> yeah almost no comedian that I heard that John Mulaney's always on though in conversation yeah. so he mm-hmm. probably just comes up with bits while he's talking to uh-huh. people which is like honestly the worst <laughs> I, I do that I um, <laughs> I was in like kind of a, a relationship kind of a not necessarily romantic but mostly like kind of a muse type relationship where hanging out with her her background is so interesting mm. and she's like such a unique person that uh when i'm around her i would just think of a bunch of funny riffs and like she would tell me stuff about uh like uh or being muslim and shit like that and like cool. i was like i can use that so when we hang out i would just constantly just be writing things in my notepad and she's fine with it you know? cool. but um uh, but I can see that being pretty annoying. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's fun though. It's it can be fun as long as you're not like, I don't know. As long as you're kind of funny, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're not mean. Yeah. Uh, what is your writing process? Um, have thoughts. Uh, write them in my notes app mm-hmm. on my phone, and then before mics, I spend a couple hours just like writing down. Uh, I got some notebooks here. These aren't nice. for show and tell necessarily, but uh. uh you mean right. I can't read your intimate <laughs> notebooks? Uh, well, you can't see shit. Yeah, that's but, so weird <laughs> that it doesn't come up. Um, but basically write down all the stuff I've written in my notes uh-huh. that I think might work and then uh, select ones that uh, I'm excited about. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'll start to maybe walk around and talk through it or sometimes type it out. But usually I'll just get in the shower and I'll like go through the bit. Showers are magical. Yeah, like an insane person, just like and like have my phone, uh, just a wet phone, like trying nice. to type type the ideas so I don't forget them. And then uh, yeah, just try it out in the show. And nice. Then, uh, and then set lists. These are mostly set lists. Uh, yeah. Cool. And then uh, love that. And then you find connections between bits, and that's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's so, very satisfying. Yeah very satisfying um cool well, we are coming up on the end there's a couple things that i like to definitely hit the first um is like who are your comedic inspirations mm-hmm. and like your favorite comedians right now whether local mm-hmm. or famous mm-hmm. or okay um huge fan of uh, jamie lerner i think oh, yes. she's uh d- you're definitely you're on the way first person who said that <laughs> I was right there. <laughs> I know. I'm like, come on, yeah. guys. Yeah. Come on. Um, let's see. No, you are great, though. Oh, thank you. Uh, a lot you of the comedians too. here. Uh, the ones here, I like uh, Luis, Hector, yeah. Kyla yeah, is yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, and you missed her on this trip. I did. Very yeah. sad She's traveling that. a lot now. She's mm-hmm. starting to really get work, like in London mm-hmm. and Ireland and yeah. everywhere. It's good. I'm That's happy awesome. for her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm mad that she's not here uh, when I'm here, but whatever. 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 I'll get over it. You'll have to find her. Yeah. Um, Ewan in the scenes, really. Yeah. I've only seen him once. You'll see him but tonight. The most unique, <laughs> uh, insane shit I, I, I've probably ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're coming up with something uh, really fun for April Fool's shitty tonight. Nice. So. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it was wild to see him the first time. I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is happening?" <laughs> and like, and I wasn't. I was coming at it from like a stand-up lens Mm -hmm. so i wasn't laughing i was just appreciating but everyone else was and i was just sort of like this is a learning experience for me how is he doing this (laughs) (laughs) yeah but uh, his brain is so weird yeah like i love comedians where you can like really appreciate their brain Mm -hmm. and i i've seen so many open mics at this point just hundreds and hundreds that like uh i like to watch unique stuff yeah i get a lot more out of that than stuff that um that I kind of I see if I see the structure of it too much, mm-hmm. I'm just like, all right, well, what else we got? Um, but uh, 
famous super famous comedians. Sure. Nate Bargatze I've oh, been yeah. into lately. I can see that for you. Yeah. yeah. He's I, got that sort of like Midwest American thing. Yeah. I'm I'm in like uh, a little crisis. Am I a Nate Bargatze type, a Norm Macdonald type, or an Anthony Jeselnik type? <laughs> and those are very different comedians. Yeah, but so. you can be all of them. And then so, and one day can. people are going to be like, am I a Jordan Thomas Gray type? <laughs> like, am I a... Am I a Jamie Lerner? Exactly. Um, Nate Bergatzi, Louis C.K., of course. Uh, you know he came through here. He did? Yeah. 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 Uh, Todd Berry came to visit Warsaw Whoa. while back and just did all the mics. Just a awesome, like, comics comic. Amazing. Um, uh, I got a couple other names in my head. Give me, give me two seconds. One, two. No, I'm just counting instead of thinking <laughs> of the names. Uh, I'll count. One. Two, oh, that's distracting. Three. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, fuck. Uh, uh, it's I okay. Have, no, I have a list. You have a list. If, if we have, if we have a little bit of time. Sure. Um, because this is important to you. But. I it's I just kind of like it because I think a lot of the people that are listening are fellow comedians mm-hmm. and people who really appreciate comedy, and so it's always nice to just get a couple. But you, I mean, you listed some some good names, so it's you know. Rory Scovel. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Bo Burnham, of course. Oh, Bo Burnham. Part of why I'm doing stand up is I watched Inside while mm. I was work, uh, wa- working a job. I It was making me miserable. And I was like, this guy put together this amazing thing in the mm-hmm. past year. What did I do this past year? I worked. That's all I did. And that really pushed me into, yeah. into doing stand up. Um, Rory Scovel, mm-hmm. he's like a more Southern Nate Bergazzi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really fun. More absurd. Okay. Um, James A. Caster fucking do you know who that is yeah of course british yeah sorry are you mansplaining james a cast some people don't know that's so that's weird because he has netflix specials he has Mm -hmm. like multiple and he i love his podcast off Mm -hmm. menu oh yeah he's so good with that gamble yeah yeah, yeah. he's i think one of the smartest comedians working so smart the structure he has a four-hour special where it's all interconnected and it's It's all insane great uh did you see cold lasagna hate myself 1999 that i did not uh fantastic okay I'll it's, watch it. it's it's two hours oh and God. it's just bangers all the way through he's it so is amazing. good he is yeah. so good yeah, yeah cool 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 yeah. um i was just gonna say the 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 bo burnham inside thing i kind of had the same feeling where i was like um i i had been doing comedy and i was like what not really during covid um and i was like how is anything I ever do now gonna make any difference when something like inside is there? I was mm. like, I love Bo Burnham, but you've just set the bar so high. It's intimidating. Yeah, and I was like, oh right, but you're also like rich and famous and have all the resources in the world. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to work during COVID. You can literally just live in a little studio that you have access to mm-hmm. because you're already rich mm-hmm. and just fucking And he started at thing. 17 and he's had many, many years yeah. to a super smart guy. Gonna call Brilliant. out in Warsaw, uh, yeah, Ariel call out Bialski. Your... What? Say Excellent. it again. Sorry, I Ari- you. Ariel Bialski. Ariel Bialski. Uh, very funny, very tall guy. Uh, Kamal Gerard cool. uh, is a guy who tours with me sometimes. Nice. Super funny. Um, yeah. Next question. Nice. Yeah, love it. And then the last question I always love to get to is, what would your advice be to any new comedians? Uh, yes. Um, I think it was. I don't know who said this. Maybe Anthony Jeselnik said, um, "Any comedian." that gives advice is just telling comedians how to be more like themselves. Mm. So I think it's a very personal thing. The only advice when people ask that I give these days is record your set, watch it back. It's going to be brutal. Pay attention to when they're not laughing. Mm -hmm. Cut that stuff out. If it's not worked two or three times, keep the stuff that's working. The rest is, yeah. Yeah. Edit, 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 generate and test. A lot of new comedians will do the same set over and over again yeah even when things that aren't working editing is like the main part of it like you got to generate mm-hmm. ideas test them out so if you're new just try a bunch of new stuff literally just to have fun try things um watch good stand up and then um force yourself to grit your teeth and watch your sets and really be brutal with cutting the stuff that's that's not working and then come back to that stuff nice. maybe later yeah. Because you don't even know what your voice is yet when you're starting. Exactly. So why would you polish one set if you don't know what what it is that you're trying to do yet? Mm. It takes time uh, and f- trying a lot of different stuff to figure out what you yeah. like. And maybe I'm 
an ironic racist misogynist and maybe that's my thing and I have to accept that. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> you are not. <laughs> ironically, maybe. But ironically, <laughs> may, ironically, it's uh, odds, are, odds are high. Um, amazing. Yeah. Well, this has been really, really nice. It's been nice. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Jordan. Looking forward to tonight. Yeah, Performing. cool. Um, well, we'll, we'll uh, see you around the scene sometime soon. Absolutely. I don't know when this episode is going to drop, to be mm-hmm. honest. I'm banking a few because mm-hmm. I'm going to be traveling a bit. So my Schmingus Dingus reference is going to be way dated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you, it's never too late to learn about <laughs> Schmingus Dingus. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.